You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. I'm joined now by the Southeast Regional Director of IDEA Ireland, Ray O'Connor, the man responsible for attracting new multinational companies to set up in the Southeast of Ireland. Good morning, Ray. I'd like to start by asking you, what is your role within the IDEA entail? Okay, well, uh, I'm a regional manager um, based in Cork, but we cover the entire South region. I suppose essentially what my role is, is a local point of contact, both for existing client companies, if they have an issue, uh, IDA would also have a, a dedicated point of contact w- um, with an IDA. But I suppose w- also our role is to try to, to market the region, help develop the region, so we'd engage both with local stakeholders, whether it's local authorities, chambers of commerce, education providers, in terms of trying to build up the product offering, and then we try and communicate the message internally with our colleagues who are uh, specialists in different uh, sectors, but also the guys overseas in our global teams trying to promote the southeast, the southwest, or whatever the location might be. And how do you go about that? Well, it's a long process, I suppose. It's basically uh, we're, we're it's IDA is, is sales salespeople really, or market marketeers. What we're trying to do first is we're trying to market Ireland as a location for companies that are uh, looking to internationalize or expand their operations. So. Typically, IDA, I suppose, within the organisation, we have about 250 people globally. Uh, that's both at home and, and overseas. Uh, we have uh, kind of split up into global teams and uh, uh, in our main markets. So, for example, whether it's the, the US, North America, Europe or into Asia, we would have people on the ground there that are knocking on doors, trying to get in, meet companies, have a conversation about Ireland, about their international operations and try and provide them with a, a useful proposition to say that if you're looking at international locations, Ireland is the place to be. How does the IDA go about identifying potential companies to come to Ireland? Well, I suppose IDA is a long track record of, of working with companies across many sectors. Uh, and I think uh, all you need to do is look around uh, the county, the region, the country to see the, the, the type of companies that are there. So whether it's uh, pharmaceuticals, medical technologies, IT companies, financial service companies, there's a whole range of industry sectors there that, that IDA uh, works very closely with and maintains close relationships. So I think we would have a very good understanding uh, by working proactively with our clients. We understand what their needs are now and into the future, and that helps us uh, uh, chart what we can do for both of our existing client companies to respond to their needs, but also in terms of targeting the new companies that are out there. What would the average pipeline time be, let's say, from the time you speak to a company from a potential perspective in terms of coming to Ireland straight through to when they're actually employing people here? It really varies by industry sector and by by the type of project being looked at. If if you take, for example, the likes of, say, pharmaceutical companies, uh, uh, food companies, etc., they might be looking at investments that can take um, probably... Uh, sometimes the decision might be made very quickly, other times um, it can uh, be protected, so it can take a number of years. I suppose if you look at the example of um, Amgen, for example, uh, back in the when that company started up, somebody from IDA would have uh, knocked on the door of Amgen there in, in the US, uh, introduced themselves, said, I'm the person from IDA, if you're ever looking at doing something international, and they probably would have laughed at him or her. But over the years, IDA would maintain that relationship, build that relationship with companies like that, so that when... Amgen was looking to for an international location for its manufacturing operations. Um, Ireland was in the mix as well as other international companies like Switzerland. And uh, uh, people are probably aware in terms of Amgen chose Cork as a location for a very large biopharmaceutical manufacturing facility. They came in uh, uh, on the ground, set up a team, went through planning applications and then events changed and, and they decided not to go ahead with it. So you could say it took maybe, in that case, maybe 20 years to win that investment for Ireland and maybe two years to lose it. But then by maintaining the relationship with Amgen, um, we've, we've secured an investment that's taken place in Dublin. Uh, so we, we still want a project for Ireland. So that's very much the remit of IDA, continue to work with the companies uh, through good times and bad. So from the perspective of IDA identifying a particular company that would be interested in expanding into Europe or overseas, talk me through the process from the time you contact a company straight through to a company deciding to locate here. What does that process look like? There's no set process, but typically what would happen is, is our global teams would be split up into different uh, divisions, industry sectors. So you've got people working in, say, life sciences, medical technologies, financial services. And there, there are people in overseas offices that are basically building relationship with those companies. So typically what would happen is they would um, uh, have a conversation, I suppose, firstly about Ireland in terms of saying why Ireland makes sense. And then if the company is interested or are at a stage where they're looking at um, possibly international operations, they might uh, introduce conversation in terms of say, well, where could that project locate? So typically we are really focused on catering for clients' needs. 
we could put uh, solutions, uh, towns and villages that might uh, we could put in front of a client and the client is just going to say, you know, you're not listening to me. These are my requirements. So typically, uh, clients are looking to locate in locations that have a large population that they can draw a good, skilled workforce. They like to be in locations where there's existing client companies there that give them confidence to say, well, if it's good enough for the top companies in the world, it's going to be good enough for us. Or if they're a second or third tier company, they can tap into that skilled workforce that's already here in the ground. So that makes our job a bit more challenging in terms of trying to encourage where the company might locate. Uh, but typically what we try and do is we get the companies to come over and site visit to Ireland, have a look at a number of locations that would meet their criteria. Uh, and ultimately, we're trying to convince them to locate in Ireland with that operation. If the opportunity presented itself, we would try and focus and say, well, how far into a regional location will this client go? In some cases, clients will say it's Dublin or nothing. In other cases, clients are very much open to locating in, in smaller uh, regional locations. And, and we would try to influence that decision where we can. And apart from, I will say, skill base and complementary companies in the region, what are the other main buying considerations, uh, let's say, for an area or a geographical location that a company would have? Again, it, it depends on the project. For pharmaceutical uh, project, they're looking at utility-rich land, so a large land bank or land bank that has a lot of wastewater, fresh water, uh, gas, uh, power, etc. In the case of a service project, they're just looking for a high-quality office uh, facility, preferably that's there, built, ready, that they can go in and see and move into fairly quickly. Because I think on the service-type projects, you'll, you'll see that decisions are made fairly fast, um, Typically, a company will look at a number of locations and they'll weigh up a number of criteria and they'll say, look, this is the place we feel that we can be most successful. Uh, so I think it varies. Uh, you'll find decisions made fast. Uh, some of the other criteria would be, can I get uh, access to skilled people? Are there similar companies there? Uh, is there property solutions? What's the accessibility like? Is it the sort of project that I will need to bring people in and out and being close to an airport can be important or may not be important? Good road infrastructure is a third level colleges there that we can tap into for current and future needs. So all all these factors kind of weigh in together and help to to win an investment. It's widely considered across County Wexford that County Wexford seems to be the forgotten county when it comes to the IDA. What are your thoughts on that? It's it's challenging. I suppose I have a regional remit and my focus is trying to get as much investment as I can into this region. But in the case of Wexford, uh, we're also focused on if there's opportunities there, we're trying to, to tap into those opportunities. And there is a great, I mean, Wexford has a fantastic mix of uh, overseas companies already. There's probably uh, over uh, probably a dozen overseas companies that are located here. Some of the top uh, companies in the world have operations here. They probably employ about 2,000 people directly. And there's many great examples. And obviously, a, a big focus for us in what we do is, is work with the existing base of companies that are already here. It's easier to try and uh, keep those companies rather than go out to find a new one. So if a company is going through a difficult period and they might be even downsizing, we try and work with that company where we can influence that decision, great. In some cases we can, but we try and maintain that contact, uh, encourage them not to close the operation, even if they have to downsize for a while. Okay, it's difficult to take that, but it's better that, that if they downsize, hold their presence here and then hopefully grow in years to come. Uh, it's a lot better than, than having the operation closed down fully. So there are some of the ways we work with companies in that regard. Um, but again, obviously, we're constantly focused on trying to get new companies in. But there's a lot of competition out there. From your experience, what do you think, what type of sector or industry is Wexford best placed to attract? Across the whole region, we're probably focused on, on two main areas, and it's very generic, but uh, high value manufacturing, which probably relates to the likes of uh, life sciences, medical technologies, and to a certain degree, food. Uh, although we we wouldn't have a strong remit enterprise to deal with a lot of the, the food companies, but also international services. And I think it's difficult to um, say for, for Wexford, it's difficult to say, well, look, how can we get a project like a, a PayPal uh, that located in uh, Dundalk to, to locate in Wexford? It would be fantastic if we could. But we, it goes back to what the client wants. If the client is saying, I want to go to a location where I want to tap into skill resource, show me that you have the skilled people here. And by that, I mean, it could be a software developer. I want, I want to hire 10 people with a Java or C++ or WebSphere. I need a multilingual team, so that means I need uh, 20 Germans, I need 15 French, 4 Spanish and 7 Italians to demonstrate those people are there on the ground. So they're the sort of discussions we have with clients and that, that can become challenging, but that's what we're focused on. There's one great initiative I think that has been recently launched is, is Connect Ireland. And I've seen projects uh, in my time in IDA where projects have located because there's a local connection or because somebody involved in the company has an affinity with a certain location. And that has a major influence in terms of uh, driving sometimes where projects locate. And if you think of Connect Ireland, it's basically trying to tap into to the diaspora that are overseas, 
that could help IDA or Connect Ireland, the company itself, to actually get in there and talk to that company about locating or having a presence in Ireland. So it's basically saying if uh, you, for example, were working uh, overseas and you, your friend, your brother or sister was working in a company that IDA has no relationship with, and you know, for example, that that company might be looking at setting up a, a European base, why not go to that, that individual and say, look, could you influence them to, to have that presence to locate here in Ireland? And if they're from Wexford, why not get them to locate in Wexford Town or Gorey or in Escorty? And there's kind of a finder's fee involved in that. But I, I think that would be a great way. And the, I know the county have done a lot of work in terms of ambassadors programme. That is really a, a tangible way that you could uh, control your destiny in terms of trying to get projects in here. It might be small, 10, 20, 30 persons, but those operations can grow considerably as well. How beneficial is it for us to have access to Rassler Europort from here? It improves the accessibility. I think um, what we've seen is a lot of the projects that we win are on the services sector. So um, in terms of the shipping of goods in and out isn't as much a, a big issue as it was in the past. Uh, but definitely having that infrastructure there is, is very helpful. Um, I know, for example, if, if it could be used for other types of projects as well, we're, we're, we're keen to explore that in terms of is there infrastructure in the port that could be utilised in terms of things that might happen in years come in terms of offshoring, wind, etc. Um, so, again, we're exploring opportunities there. But I think, I think accessibility in, I mean, the road infrastructure has improved considerably. And, it, I mean, that has been a, a bit of a barrier in previous years. And I think the improved infrastructure is helping us make it more marketable for the, as a county. And apart from that, what else could we do as a county to become more attractive to IDA type clients? If I go back to the point, IDA is a very small organisation. We're, we're a national agency. We, we're there on behalf of the people of Ireland to try and market and to the location. We're trying to bring investments into regional locations where we can. We can't really do it alone. It's very much a team effort. I think what you'll find is, and you probably hear stories yourself in terms of when you get the, the local people involved in terms of the key stakeholders, the, they have a major influence in terms of winning projects, opening doors, and the, the Connect Ireland, I think, is one example. So I think it's very much, it should be a team effort. I think sometimes you, you put on a Wexford hat, sometimes you need to put on a, a South East hat, and sometimes you need to put on an Ireland hat. So uh, we would very much, we don't, IDA doesn't win investments it's, um, I think the stakeholders involved in projects it win investment. If you think of a, an itinerary, a client comes in, they're going to meet a whole range of different people in terms of existing IDA client companies. They might meet indigenous companies. They might will meet, say, the, the universities. They might meet recruiters. They might meet tax firms, banks, lawyers, etc. cetera. Um, there might be other agencies involved like the EPA. They might meet the Wexford County Council in terms of from planning perspective. So it's very much a team effort. And basically that's, that's I think, by coming together, uh, that sends out a very strong, proactive message to, to investors and they say, well, there's something, there's something special going on here that makes a difference. How actively engaged are the IDA, let's say, on a local level with uh, Carlow IT Wexford campus in relation to the future skills requirement for the county for us to be in a position to attract IDA type clients? Well, we're involved, um, firstly, I suppose, in terms of the South East uh, Forum, so um, in terms of local authorities, uh, WIT, IT Carlow are meeting there. So uh, we would feed our true requirements in that. Um, I think they would have, I suppose, by bringing companies in an itinerary, uh, I think is probably one of the ways that we, um, client companies can tell them what their needs are, uh, both now into the future. And I can, think it gives, gives a very good understanding uh, to the, the institutes. But I think the institutes run fantastic courses already. They're very much tuned in with industry on the ground. Um, and I think they, the courses that they provide are very much tailored for industry's needs now into the future. And again, I think that needs to be an ongoing process. What are the hot industries out there today that are looking to locate in places like Ireland? The hot industries, I suppose, we're, we're targeting companies that probably haven't even been um, born yet. I mean, if you look at the companies that we have located in Ireland over the last two, three years in terms of uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc., these probably didn't exist five, ten years ago. So... It's very difficult, but we have a, a five-year strategic plan that we're working through where we've identified the key areas where we think there are opportunities uh, at a high level. They will continue to be in high-value manufacturing, biopharmaceuticals, medical technologies, areas like that. On the services side, we see um, Ireland being a base um, into Europe for, for U.S. companies, but also we're targeting uh, companies from Asia. We have aggressive targets trying to get 20% of our investments um, from our growth markets by 2014, which is very challenging when you think that traditionally a lot of our investments coming into Ireland would have been, uh, say, from North America. And I think Ireland relates very well to, to US uh, culture. It's very difficult when you're trying to target uh, different cultures in Asia. And I think uh, it's a learning curve for, our, for Ireland and for IDA in terms of how can we can influence that um, that culture in terms of winning investments here. So in terms of sector, it's across the board. Um, it's, it's financial service, international financial services. It's gaming. 
It's um, ICT, a whole area of service innovation, uh, data analytics, cloud computing, um, and then on the manufacturing continues to be important. The high value manufacturing the, where we have a f- fantastic track record from a regulatory perspective, I think will, will help us to win additional investments going forward. Are there many companies in the pipeline at present that have expressed an interest in locating in County Wexford? IDA always has a pipeline of uh, companies and there's a whole range of investments that come forward. We work with both our existing base, firstly, so you've got to remember probably 60% of our uh, the investments that IDA is uh, privileged to, to announce with the Minister basically come from existing companies. So we will continue to, to try and target additional investments from our existing base firstly. And in terms of working with new companies, yes, we are um, talking to companies about our opportunities in Wexford, um, but it, it is it is challenging. We're, we're competing with the large urban centres, um, but we, we are looking at ways we can do that in terms of packaging up the offering, reducing the risk for, say, a small or emerging company and saying, well, You know, if you locate here, there's a very supportive environment. If you go to large urban centre, you'll have more expensive uh, properties, salaries, maybe tied into a very long-term lease. Um, And we're looking at ways that we can maybe package that and reduce the risk for for an investor to say, well, if I locate here, you know, the the risk is minimal. And um, as opposed to going to a large urban centre where the cost might be more uh, prohibitive um, and be more onus. So I think packaging up the offering... Uh, and looking at it from a client's perspective can make it a lot more attractive. Is our 12.5% corporation tax still the number one reason why companies are locating here in Ireland? It's one of a number of reasons. Um, corporation tax, yes, is important. Um, I think it helps um, in terms of get Ireland at the table, but it's not the only reason because I think it's a whole number of factors. It's, it's really, I think the, the, the single most important thing is skills. If you can demonstrate to a company, these are from the top companies in the world, Skills globally are a challenge for these companies. They can't get people and they can't get enough of them to make their operations successful. So if you can demonstrate to a company that if you locate here, we can get you the skilled people to make your business operate and make it successful. And we've been doing that for the last 30, 40 years very successfully for companies and that's where they continue to invest. So I think tax is one reason, but I think skills is probably the second most important thing to a company. Uh, There are other things in terms of our track record for different industries, our regulatory regime in terms of Pharmaceutical and medical technologies companies are in Ireland because we have a fantastic manufacturing process and we have a fantastic re- regulatory record. So in terms of other medical technologies companies that are out there, Ireland would be on the international um, uh, footprint in terms of where to locate because of our record there. If you think about it, uh, companies making products, they've invested bi- millions if not billions in terms of R&D. Uh, when it comes to manufacturing that product, it, once it gets through the regulatory process, if it uh, if you're going to choose a location, you want to make damn sure that it's going to be a good location. You might s- save a bit on cost, but if you run into problems on that, it could jeopardise the whole uh, profitability of that product. So I think regulation is a huge issue. IDA do not have an office based here in Wexford. Lots of people would consider that by saying that they have no interest in Wexford. Wexford is not on the map for the IDA. What would you say to that? Well, I'd say firstly, um, our, our shop front is not in Wexford. Uh, our, our shop front is out there globally. So we have an overseas office network where we're basically out talking to clients that, that might locate in Wexford. There, so, you know, we don't, we don't have a, an office in Wexford. We don't have an office in many counties. Uh, we have regional offices, but our focus really is on is trying to get out there and talk to companies in, in our overseas market. So, for example, we've had a difficult um, process over the last, um, I suppose, 18 months, two years, where we, you know, where, where we have to put, replace staff in overseas markets. Um, we need to find those people um, and backfilling those roles can be can be challenging. So uh, our main focus really from my perspective is, is from a regional perspective, we're trying to get investment in here. My main focus is talking to my colleagues in, uh, both internally and our global teams around around the world in terms of saying why they should look at the South East, why they, Wexford might be a proposition. So we would be engaged very much and I think IDA would be very focused on, on the South East in terms of trying to win investment um, I think over the past year, I've seen a, a strong commitment from all our divisions in terms of trying to get, get investment to the southeast. I've seen it in uh, both our CEO, uh, and you know we we have reflected that there is an increase of itineraries coming into the region. Um, you could probably admit, yes, some of that is focused on on Waterford, but we would take a view that if we can get investment into into our gateway of Waterford uh, and our hub locations, um, and we demonstrated that nationally in in loads of cases where we have been successful. Do we need to do more? Yes, we do. Um, and we will continue to try and strive to get investments in here. Well, Ray, it's certainly been a very insightful interview. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for dropping by this morning. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.